Happy Armor Day, everyone! I know you must be so excited to be here on the Spectre Creative Channel, where we celebrate Armor Day every day. I spent all year looking forward to all of the awesome content and specials that only get aired during this magical time of the year. And I don't know how your family celebrates Arbor Day, but we follow the ancient tradition of using fireworks and setting them up around trees, putting presents around the fireworks, and then lighting them. And then everyone runs to the tree to grab their presents before everything explodes. And luckily, you usually wind up getting your present, but if you're late, you wind up with burned down plastic and branches. But hey, we get to go plant those branches in the backyard and see if they'll turn into trees next year. No matter how you choose to celebrate Arbor Day, I think we can all agree that when it comes to a wooden log, there is literally nothing more boring. In fact, every possible toy in the world is more exciting than just getting a, a giant wooden log. And that's why wooden logs are often turned into articulated toys. Because just getting a log isn't a fun way to engage with wood. You want to have articulation. You want to have characters. I mean, heck, the very first action figure of a superhero ever was made of wood. And it's great that wooden toys are making such a comeback. The texture, the feel, the smell. There is something about holding a wooden toy that is just, well, it feels natural because it's not, you know, it's a real product. And granted, some wooden toys can be a little creepy. For the most part, wooden toys are viewed as a very wholesome response to, well, corporate production. In fact, one of my favorite wooden toys of all time are the original Little People from Fisher-Price. Back in the 50s, they were actually made of wood, which means they were witches. And I grew up in the 80s when Brio train tracks were, you know, huge thing. And of course, we all know the great wood toy revelation that Throckmorton von Husendar created when he first designed the wooden mannequin toys that are used in art. But for me, toy trees are where it's all at. I mean, you can't celebrate Arbor Day and be a toy fan without looking at the multitude of toy trees that come in different scales, different styles, different play patterns, and aimed at different ages. I mean, toy trees don't have to be made of wood. They can be really made of anything. It's about the shape. Then they can often be used as sort of hideouts for different toys. Even Lego has gotten into the game, creating one of their most difficult Lego sets ever, the uh, Playhouse Treehouse, which is really hard to put together. Although trees are often used as environmental places and kind of bases, they can also be the toy themselves. They don't just have to be a stationary object that's used to complement other toys including their action features or, in, you know, an environmental display diorama aspect, like with the noted Brio trees that you can use to make it look like your train is running through a forest, because, you know, that happens. And trees are things that kids are naturally attracted to, because they see them in the world, and they're there, and, you know, they're big, and they're something that kids can feel they can conquer. Now, on this channel, we mostly talk about action figures, which is why this Arbor Day, why is this Arbor Day different from all others? Well, because we're going to talk about tree action figures. I mean, there's nothing more exciting in the world than an action figure of a tree. Now, I want to go through a couple of them, and one of my favorites is this tree monster here that was kind of in a generic fantasy line that came out about 10 years ago. But man, if I had this as a kid... It was part of the True Legends line, which was kind of generic monsters and orcs and dragons and knights. But come on, you can't have a fun adventure with dragons and orcs and stuff without a giant monster tree to eat them. Now, while trees can be shown as the bad guy, I like when trees are the good guy. I mean, that's what Arbor Day is all about, right? So let's look at a few of them. Moss Man has to be probably included in the list. I mean, I, this is a channel that talks about Masters of the Universe and He-Man a lot, but he's not really a tree. He's much more of kind of like a nature spirit or kind of like a sorcerer, magical guy who sort of controls nature versus an actual, you know, living tree like that giant tree monster was, although he's, you know, definitely friendlier. There have been versions of Mossman that have been more tree-like than others. I think the Masterverse one is my favorite, since he has an actual tree component that can strap onto his arm. I mean, how cool is that? But in the vintage line and the way he was shown in Filmation, he was kind of much more of like a green version of Sasquatch, the, you know, a Bigfoot that lived in the forest. All right, 
the other big tree one is, of course, Groot. Now, Groot has been around for almost 50 years. Uh, he was created in the 1960s by Stan Lee. And was it Kirby or Ditko? I'm sure someone will correct me in the, uh, in the comments. But yeah, ever since Groot became Baby Groot, well, he's essentially taken the entire pop culture world by storm because, man, when you can make a, a cute version of a tree... But Groot has given us a lot of really cool articulated action figures. And there is no doubt that Gre Gre Groot represents a tree. Now, he's not physically a tree. He is, this is his species. He is, I guess he's a Groot. But, um, you know, he's very tree-like. So you have to include him here because his appendages, his head, I mean, it all is very reminiscent of being a tree. Even though, again, technically he is just an alien species. It's great that we've seen him in all different stages of his life, just like a tree, which goes from egg corn all the way up to a physical large branching tree. All right, I suppose we probably also need to include Swamp Thing in this. Now, the coolest Swamp Thing figure I think I've seen in a long time is this one from uh, McFarlane. They recently showed this deluxe Swamp Thing, and yeah, it's pretty badass. Again, Swamp Thing is kind of like Moss Man, where he's much more of a nature, spirit, superhero who controls nature. I guess Storm does that, too. Well, no, she controls the weather, so, yeah, forget that. Well, Swamp Thing has had many action figures over the years, mostly because he also had his own line in the 80s and produced most of the Swamp Thing figures. Otherwise, he's had sort of a one-off in different DC lines. But the greatest tree Swamp Thing figure of all is this one here. So this is Camouflage Swamp Thing from the, uh, the old Swamp Thing toy line. And, yeah, of all the different Swamp Thing variations, which I can't believe they got so many variations of Swamp Thing for this line. I mean, there's only so many ways you can color a plant. But this one in particular, is Swamp Thing morphing into a tree? Is he a tree? Is he just looking like a tree? Well, that brings us to an Ent. If you don't know what an Ent is, an Ent is an ancient Middle-earth creature that looks like a walking, talking tree. Now, Treebeard, the leader of the Ents, appeared in two towers. Well, obviously in the book, but in the theatrical movie was where most of sort of pop culture got to know him. And he was available on two different scales. He was in a six-inch scale where he was huge, and then he was actually just done as a six-inch figure, which is kind of how I think they should do a lot of the Marvel cosmic beings. It would be cool. And, of course, we've had other versions that have fit in with miniatures, and that actually works great because Ents are huge. They're as tall as trees. They often get mistaken for trees. In fact, that's what Mary and Pippin did when they were climbing Treebeard. But I think the winner, the greatest tree figure of all time, has to be the Funko Pop version. I mean, nothing says old man tree as much as this. You get it. You look at it. And if you can't see this as a tree, well, you are not a fan of Arbor Day. So whether you're playing with a log or you're playing with an articulated action figure or just decorating your Brio train set with lots of trees today, I hope Everyone out there in Toy World has an amazing Arbor Day. Good luck racing towards your tree. Avoid those exploding fireworks. Get your presents. Enjoy your Charlie Brown special. And be sure to share a tree and a video like this with all of your friends. It's the best way to celebrate Arbor Day. And there's nothing that says Arbor Day more than a tree action figure. Thanks for watching.